Es gibt ein Haus in Neu-Berlin, man nennt es Haus Abendrot. Es war Surprising is the word I would best describe Wolfenstein the New Order. I came for the shooting and stayed for the story. You play as John Cena look like William B.J. Blaskovich as he tries to conquer a Nazi castle in the game's opening which is set in 1946. No surprises, the plan goes tits up, and BJ ends up with a serious head injury, and ends up in a vegetative state, not waking up for some 14 years. He wakes up in a Polish hospital to find out the Nazis are ruling the globe, and must find the resistance to stop the Nazis once and for all, which means a massive great big bloody rampage. The story may start out quite cliché, but soon flourishes into a brilliant bit of alternative history fun, with some fantastic references to real-world 1960s happenings, such as the moon landing and the Beatles, which have now been Nazified. Also strong is the game's characters. At first they may seem your typical paper-thin stereotypical characters, but all of them are brilliantly fleshed out with their own problems and personalities. Now, to the shooting. Unlike most modern day shooters, your health doesn't regenerate. You instead collect health packs and armour, a la, a la Goldeneye on the Nintendo 64. But you can absorb quite a fair bit of damage in the defence, so you can go in all guns blazing and killing loads of people at once, which would be quite suicidal in other shooters like Call of Duty, Battlefield, and Halo. You can carry a range of familiar weapons such as a handgun, knife, shotgun, marksman rifle and assault rifle, all of which can be dual wielded. There is also one unique weapon in the game called the laser craft work which starts off as a small laser that cuts wires so BJ Blazkowicz can fit through. But later on it turns into an alternative laser gun which can actually do some really devastating damage. Instead of going in loud and proud, there's also a decent stealth mechanic which can be incredibly fun as there's also a bucket load of perks you can earn by playing different playstyles such as Assault and Stealth. You can knife enemies to death for about 10 times and you get perk. Most of these you unlock without purposely trying to get them and they don't really make much difference. You get more ammo or quicker reloading speed but nothing really makes much change to the game. But you do get a trophy for each perk you unlock, so it is quite nice to get them if you're a trophy hunter. Going through the 16 or so levels, you notice that it can get quite a bit linear, but there are many different paths you can take if you want to explore and find all the collectibles and stealth opportunities. However you play the game, whether you shoot people to death or stab them to death, it looks brilliant on the PlayStation 4, running at a smooth 1080p 60 frames per second. Though some of the textures do look a bit blurry and a bit quite last gen. Considering you have to look on the floor a lot to find ammo, armor and collectibles, it does get a little bit annoying and a bit off-putting, but nothing really game-breaking. Unlike most modern day shooters, this doesn't include any multiplayer at all. But considering the last Wolfenstein multiplayer was a pretty shit, it doesn't matter as there's plenty of content here. With a strong 15 hour campaign with quite a lot to do, it will probably take people who want to rush for it probably about 8 to 10 hours. But nevertheless, you can replay the game again and save the other character, which would change the story, whoever you pick. My only fault with the game is that the textures can be a bit blurry, and early on in the game, I had some really, really terrible ones on the first couple of levels. It really looked bad when I came out of cover. But apart from that, nothing really else. For the conclusion, at the end of the day, you're getting a really, really good first-person shooter with a great story and an awesome supporting cast.